Well, our moms think we're funny. Hey everyone, I'm Comey. Hey everybody, this is Turk182. What's up? I, me, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, not moving cool, moving cool, man. Yeah, you know you how know. I be. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, I'm the opening act, the headliner. Um, so, uh, we are here today to, uh, <sighs> we are gathered here today to deliver a podcast episode to you, um, the in, people. In holy matrimony. Yeah, to bind you together and a, uh, to commit you to one another. And when I say commit, I'm talking to like in a like in a sane asylum. Yeah. Um, you think in the uh, in the 6,900 views that we've had on our podcast that at some point people have listened to us while begging? Mm. God, I would not think that my voice would be good for that. I, I think I, my voice would be perfect for that. I, I don't think mine would. I think mine would. Uh, I think I think mine would actually probably force people to like like. Like, God, I can't stand it. He just needs to stop. Just stop. <laughs> I hear him, like, fucking stutter one more time. Like, holy shit. Maybe people use us for, like, really aggressive hate fucking. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> stupid bitch. Stupid bitch. Just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> Polly, you stupid bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, today's episode, we were going to do um something a little bit... Well, I should say a little bit different. Um... This one probably won't be as humorous as some of the others are, um, but I was like, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It'll be entertaining. So you know, we're here to entertain, um, you know, and uh, and be funny. But sometimes we just have to be entertaining. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, in this particular episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our top five interviewees. So. If we could interview, like, you know, um, well, I, I, you, asked, you asked me if they had to be living. I said, well, no, not necessarily. All my people are living. So, I guess you don't technically don't have me. to. I don't, I don't know. I to live it. Well, okay, as of, <laughs> as of the day this podcast, they're living. I have no idea what's going to happen to them tomorrow. But as of right now, they're, uh, they're living. This could age really poorly. <laughs> uh, so, um... Uh, sorry, I just like what? Um, so uh, this uh, if we had the ability to um to interview these people, so this is a you know it's a regular interview, so um it's not one of those things where they're going to tell us everything you ever want to know, and they're going to ask all answer all questions. It's going to be a regular interview. We have the opportunity to interview people. Um, like who would you want to interview, and like what would you want to know? Like what would you ask them? Mm -hmm. So um, so I'll start off here. And um, and I've got some. Um, so, uh, my minor minor interesting minor interesting. Yeah, yeah. So my first one here, and they're not in any particular order, but the first one I'm going to throw out here is, I'd like to interview Barack Obama. Oh, okay. So, and the reason I want to interview him is because I want to get his. I want to get his take, his opinion on certain things. Mm -hmm. So. So my, my main questions would be, does he feel that being the first black president accomplished anything? So, wow. So you were the first black president, and, and that's, that's great. You know, everything has to start from someplace. Uh -huh. But do you think that being the first, like, that you accomplish anything? Like, you, like, normally when you're the first of something, that means that there are going to be more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like you know like I, I'm I'm starting it off, but they're they're going to be you know others going to come are going to follow it. So being the first, did you accomplish anything? Is you know in that regard like what what does what did being the first mean or right, do? Right. And and kind of the follow up to that is like and how would you feel if another 24 years go by and there hasn't been another minority president or woman, I'm not talking about vice president, but 24 more years go by in that time, we haven't had another minority president, mm -hmm. black, Hispanic, whatever, or a woman president. Hmm. Because if that much time goes by, so in 24 years, you're either talking about like, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm trying to do my math here real quick. Uh, so that's uh, either six more presidents or yeah, 
or uh, see cyclical see, terms, right? Um, and or what three more? Um, three uh, see six more single terms, and then three more like uh, double like terms. double terms. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 that changed like so. Did you accomplish anything? If that much time goes by, then. Who knows how much time is going to go by before we'll see that again. So in that case, did you really accomplish anything? Did you really set a bar mm -hmm. um, to say or, or open a door to be like, okay, now this is going to happen? Or were you a fluke? Were you, hmm. were you just a, a one-off? Yeah. In which case... In other words, were you like a sign of change in the world? Right. Or was it, was it just a random chance? Right. Interesting. So, you know, I was, I was scrambling to come up with some haha -ha funny, but those are actually very insightful questions. And so it was like, you know, so, so were you a fluke or was it just like them like tossing a bone to like the black people? Like, okay, hey, you've got your one now. So it, it's happened. So mm -hmm. it could possibly happen again in the future. It's not gonna, but it could possibly <laughs> happen again in the future, you know. <laughs> and and, the, and the, if we don't get another one, like I said, did you really accomplish anything? So if you only have one, let's say that that, you know, 50 years go by, and I know that's, it's, not, it's not even, but let's say 50 years go by and we don't have another black or minority president. Mm -hmm. Did your presidency or did you being the first one mean anything right, if it right. doesn't happen again for half a century? Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, because really, who gives, I mean, in my opinion, who gives a shit? Yeah, you had one, but we've all this time has gone by and we haven't had another one. Who gives a shit if we had one? Right. I mean... Right. I mean, if it doesn't if it doesn't bring about lasting change, then what does it actually accomplish? Right. If if it isn't repeatable, and not and not consistently repeatable. Right. I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I would think personally that like the long term goal is for it to be so normalized that it's not even a discussion. Right. Like it what? should become such a thing that like it's it's not even a matter of. Oh well, this is the first Japanese president. It's like no, it's just this is the next person to become president. That's that's what we want to see out of this, right? Right. It's like um, it's like the you know in the podcast before I talked about how um, yeah, I recognize certain things about myself, you know, that I try to change. And but the first part about that is recognizing it. Mm -hmm. So um, when I found out that uh, NPH was gay, I'm like, no. No, we're talking about Neil Patrick Harris. Right. He's not. He's, he's like, we, Could we, be. Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> like, Doogie Howser, I mean, you know. Like, and I was, I was like, I was like, what? And I was shocked by that. Mm -hmm. And then I had a conversation with myself, be like, why should I be shocked by that? Yeah. Like, I had no reason to, to expect that he was any that, that he I shouldn't have expected he was straight, right? Right. Like right. that that shouldn't be like the expectation. Well he's a you know he, he's a he's a person, you know, like <laughs> no, I shouldn't have expected that. And and I shouldn't be shocked by that. So in the future when I hear that someone the one I don't give a shit, you know, um it's not my business to know. No of course you're like you you're looking for a date, but like, oh by the way, I just want you to know I'm gay. I'm like, okay, that's cool, man, but um I'm not, so you know. Uh I mean, that wouldn't be the first celebrity that we've run into with that kind of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they, I mean, all they all just just putting it out there. You're a beautiful man, Turk. I, I, well, thank you. But I'm just gonna say, like, like I mean, I still I still look back to them. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't give a shit if you're a man or a woman. I mean, if you're like, you know, you know I think that you're, you know, you know, quite stunning looking. I'm like, yeah. You know, I don't care if you're gay, straight, or you're like, you know, non-binary. Like, I, 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 if you consider yourself like a, a non-corporeal celestial, I don't give a shit. I, I mean, I know it's not like I'm being insulted, but I'm like, but if you're like, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, you know, I think you're you're a beautiful man. I'm like, thank you. I'm yeah, like, shit, no, you made my day. I mean, shit, anybody who wants to flirt with me can. Yeah, I'm like, hell yeah. yeah I may not reciprocate, but I'll at least be flattered. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it could have gotten a little more awkward for you. Where it's like, do you think I'm a beautiful man? It's like, <laughs> I would say, I would say, I think you're a very. Uh, I would think that you're a very. I'm sorry, not a what, but I think that you are a very striking man. I mean, that's, that's true. I mean, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not attracted to you, right? But that doesn't mean I can't look at you and be like, yeah, I think you're a very striking man. Yeah. I mean, unlike a Bradley Cooper, that fucker. You know, <laughs> if anybody deserves to, like, I know. Be like locked in a cellar, um, <laughs> then uh, then it's him. 
That asshole can't fucking stand Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Holy shit. He's got that fucking smile and those blue eyes and that, and that, that, that physique. And then, of course, he's talented. Look at me. I wrote and directed a movie and I was nominated for some Academy Awards. And, oh, and then uh, and I, I got, also wrote and sang a song and I was nominated for that, too. So not only am I, like, really handsome looking, but, you know, I'm also uh, I'm also really talented as like a, an actor and a director and a writer and a singer. So, oh, and what's that? I also do the voice of your favorite character in Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, fuck you, Bradley Cooper. You can fucking lick my taint, you asshole. <laughs> I mean, like, like okay, so how, what, 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 what do I have? What do how, I have, how right? How come you don't feel this level of vitriol towards Jared Leto, who is also handsome and talented and a rock star and a millionaire in a movie? Okay, so star first off, and... first off, he's a rock star. Okay, they they, they get they, they get preferential treatment in the rock star category. <laughs> but Jared Leto is like, I mean, he's he, you know, he's a dad and dad and dad and dad. He got Katy Perry eyes, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, Jared Leto. Yes, he yes he is a very accomplished singer, right? Yep. And um, great actor. He's a great actor, spectacular he, actor. I have not seen him direct or write or whatever, but he's still very low key, and he's not one of those guys that like that. Like he he's very attractive, but he's that he's that kind of like that tough, sensitive, like deep thinking, like attractive. So you see him and you look at the eyes and. And uh, you're like, oh my god! Like, like he's there's something really soulful about him. Mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper's got that smile, that charming like. He like he smiles, and women are just like, must go to Cooper. <laughs> like you know, and he's got the eyes, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, all right. Uh, so so anyway, so that that's why is why I can't stand him. Plus plus I mean like if you when I look at the, let's say I'm thumb. Uh, watching a like a cartoon or like, like I said I'm watching Rick and Morty mm -hmm. and I hear um uh Keith David doing the voice of the president or like a reverse draft or any of the other people like I, I I can I can see Keith David's like I can see his face. I can see him um no matter how many times that I've tried, when I hear Rocket's voice, I cannot picture Bradley Cooper's face. Right, right. You know, and and again he's, he's like my favorite character in Guardians of the Galaxy. And and then I'm like I'm like that's not fair. You don't get to do all that stuff. And then here I am. What 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 do I have to like to try to like you know impress people with? You know, sometimes when I'm not too depressed, I write a pretty good story. You know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, fuck you, Bradley Cooper. <laughs> I mean, if if Kanye said no one man should have all that power, motherfucker, he was talking about you. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, so so should I toss one out here? Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I was trying to finish up my thing, and it's oh, like you okay. know the whole deal was like <laughs> like it's um the was saying you know, it's if you haven't if you all that time goes by and you haven't you know if it's not repeatable. I don't feel that you've done anything. You haven't accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything that you were the first. Because, again, because you, because if it doesn't happen again, you weren't the first. You were the only. Yeah. And that's great if you're setting a world record. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's what you want to be known in a Guinness Book of World Records for, is like the only man, the ever black man to ever be nominated president. Oh, that's bully for that nigga, right? <laughs> it's, I mean... <laughs> But that should that should not be the goal, right? I mean, it, like I said, uh, so, so I was going back to the whole MPH thing. My goal, and not my goal, but one of the things I want is to no longer be shocked when someone comes out uh, and says, because it, it's not my business, I really don't give a shit. But when someone comes out and they're like, so and so is gay, but like, okay, one gets great for them. Um, I'm glad that they're comfortable enough, you know, with who they are to be able to, you know, to announce that. And two. Like I shouldn't like I shouldn't be shocked and be like they, really they're gay like I never would have thought mm -hmm. well yeah but I never would have thought or I should never thought that they wouldn't be you right, know right. so I got I got to kind of get out of that of that mindset and mm -hmm. and stuff but it's like the whole thing is like um like if you if you haven't if we haven't progressed beyond that to where we could have some someone else like I said and I'm not going to just limit it to to a black person like if it's we haven't had like either the first Asian president or the first woman president or first Hispanic president I am the fucking Eskimo president right I mean right. 
I am just saying, I mean, do I mean there are two hundred words for ice and only one word for president. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> if we haven't if we haven't got gotten to that point, then you weren't the first black president, you were just another president. Right, right. So I want to know how he feels about that. Interesting. All right, so what you got? So I think all my answers are pretty predictable and they're definitely not as deep and insightful as yours, but I would want to interview Bruce Lee. Mm. And, you know, part of me just really wants to learn, like, you know, I've, I've read his book on, like, his training regimen and stuff like that, and, you know, I, I, I understand a lot of the physical mechanics of what he went into as far as conditioning his body, but I'd like to actually discuss that with him, because, you know, it, it reads a little bit differently having a verbal conversation than, than just, like, reading someone's book on it. But, uh... More than that, you know, I feel like so many people have talked to him and discussed with him, like, kind of the gimmicky side of martial arts and, like, either using it for fighting or using it for entertainment. But martial arts are still kind of a spiritual thing, and right. a lot of people treat it as a religious thing, so I'd kind of like to examine that angle of martial arts with him and sort of discuss that. Because, you know, Bruce was a fairly spiritual person, he was very much a reader, he had a big, big library on philosophy and on all kinds of stuff like that. So that that's where I would like to pick his brain is, like, you know, in what way can you practicing the spiritual side of martial arts make the world a better place? And so that that would be, like, that, that would be, like, the first thing that really comes to mind if I could just, like, pick anybody throughout history. Like, he, he's definitely somebody who I consider a hero of mine and huh. somebody who I really try to, like... Emulate? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I have two questions, one serious and, and one not. Okay. Um, so uh, first, the, the serious one, you know, with Bruce Lee, and he like, was, uh, you know, his, his whole, like you say, his training reg regimen and how that, uh, and how, like, he worked out to tone his body. Like, he didn't study, he didn't, he didn't like, uh, uh, like physical therapy or, you know, any kind of like medical. So he, everything he did, he learned from like, okay, if I, if I do this kind of an exercise, it mm -hmm. tones these muscles. And a if lot, I do this, it a tones lot of it. He learned from like men's fitness magazines. Okay. So I was going to say like, so like, but he developed that whole thing on his own without having any formal training in like, you know, the body or medicine or anything like that. But he was like, you mm. know, this is what works. And this is that, this is going to turn tone this and tone that I, that is would be fascinating to me to kind of talk about like okay so how did you like what kind of trial and error did you go through or like mm -hmm. how did you learn like um to um like okay um i've got to do like this many reps or you know i think sometimes cases they're like uh like you like you work out you do you work out for like two hours a day mm -hmm. i mean you work out for two hours in the morning and then you uh do whatever else you eat a carb load and then you're gonna um like at two o'clock you're gonna like work out for two more hours and right, then you're gonna right. do some stuff eat another carb load and then like six o'clock you're gonna do like two more hours you know right right like like how did how did you figure out the plan that worked for you um yeah. or, or that would work you know for people in general yeah you know i would love to discuss the diet thing with them because you know fitness is so much made in the kitchen mm -hmm. but for bruce like I mean, obviously, he just had regular old portion control. He, like, he just wasn't a huge eater, but, I mean, you know, in the morning, he would have a bowl of cereal, and it wasn't, like, the sugary shit. It was, like, you know, it was healthy cereal, but it was cereal. Like, and some, like some colon blow or something? <laughs> something like that. It was, I think it was, like, Honey Bunches of Oats or something along that line. <laughs> it, was, it was something. Um, and uh, for lunch, he would usually just, like, skip lunch, drink some some tea sweetened with honey, and then for dinner it was whatever his wife made, and if she made a big plate of spaghetti, he would eat it, and it's like, that's, like, exactly what every fitness guy would tell you absolutely not to do, but Bruce was this fucking Greek god of a physical specimen, and just had this amazing body, and even Schwarzenegger was like, like, proportionally, I could never get to where he was physically. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, like, like every every aspect of that kind of stuff, I would love to just, you know, say, you know, just tell tell me everything that you can possibly tell me. Um, it, you know, ask him like, uh, like why he was eating raw hashish. I mean, <laughs> be curious about that. Um, could 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 be useful information, you know. That supposedly, from what I, an article I read, 
um, that that's what killed him. Hmm. Um, is because it was he was he was working on Game of Death, and uh, he he was eating that for some for some reason, um, or had eaten some, and he had had an allergic reaction to it, and had gone to the hospital because of brain swelling. And they had inserted a catheter, and they do all this stuff, you know. And and you know, I think well, they they inserted a catheter to help, kind of help relieve like the uh, the fluid retention in his body, and then they had to do something to like uh, release the uh, the pressure in his head, and so his, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and then he had um, like a couple weeks or months later had done it again, and that allergic reaction. And this time they weren't able to relieve the pressure and he died. Wow, wow. That's that's what I read. And that, uh, again, this is just an article I read a long time ago. I don't even remember. It was in some magazine, but the magazine was all beat up. So, like, really? it was, I'm reading this thing. And it was one of those things where I didn't keep because the magazine was in, like, horrible condition. I ended up throwing it away after I read it. Right, um, right. But uh, uh, it was, uh, he had, um, he was seeing another woman um, and or was with another woman at her house at the time and um, and had uh, passed out was when he, he had a headache mm-hmm. and had taken some aspirin and um, had passed out either on her sofa or in her bed and when she couldn't wake him and she called that producer and he came over and like okay first off we got to get him out of your house right right and then you know call the police uh but anyway but if if that was if that was accurate as far as like what he was doing you know like 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 why like what for for a guy who treated his body in such a fashion Mm -hmm. like you this wasn't recreational i wouldn't think it was recreational it was something that you thought was somehow beneficial to you so like right right like you know like what what were you expecting what were you to what do you think was going to come of this right right what what do you what did you hope to accomplish with that right yeah yeah that would definitely be that would definitely be interesting so my so my non-serious question is okay so uh who's going to win a fight between bruce lee and Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I mean, you know and, what my answer is going to be. <laughs> and this is this is the regular like President Lincoln, not the Vampire Hunter. <laughs> I mean, big guy, big reach. Skinny, Skinny guys fight to the burger. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that Bruce Lee could break both of Lincoln's legs before too much could happen. But that's just my speculation. Now here's the problem, though, is that if Bruce Lee were to, because we're not talking about like like sinking him up behind him and shooting him in the back of the head when, he did, when he's not even expecting it, right? We're talking about a fight where you know, they, like um, he's gonna like break his legs or whatever. But as soon as, as soon as any any serious harm comes to Lincoln, you know, Mary Todd's gonna be out there like a, like a shot with her crazy <laughs> ass, and then now Bruce Lee's gonna fight crazy ass Mary Todd, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Bruce no, he fights multiple people all the time. Now. I mean, this is like like he breaks his legs and everything. All of a sudden, da, 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 a new challenger. <laughs> Here she comes out like foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he might be able to beat Lincoln, but can he meet, beat Mary Todd? <laughs> what I would be curious about. <laughs> I, I just I don't have a good answer for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> what I would be curious about, though, legitimately, would be Bruce Lee versus Muhammad Ali. So Bruce Muhammad Ali, yeah, <laughs> um, that's their ship name. No, <laughs> um, because Muhammad Ali could fuck some stuff up. <laughs> yeah, and Bruce Lee, he didn't really do a lot of like fighting to bring people down. He fought to entertain. So even though he was an incredible physical specimen and he was fast as hell. I really don't know if he could actually drop Muhammad Ali before Muhammad Ali could just punch the shit out of him. Well, this is what I think is that I, I think that Bruce would he would you know he would dance around. They both would be dancing around quite a bit. Um, uh, Bruce would like take some some quick jabs to kind of assess you know mm-hmm. assess his speed and uh, to see how well he takes a couple of uh, you know quick jabs. Um, 
And then he would end up taking a blow from Ali, or maybe a couple blows from Ali. And at that, and you know, Bruce is notorious for having quite a temper. Mm -hmm. um, now he was, my understanding, he was quick to temper, but he was also quick to to like uh, cool off, you know, like right, uh, right. so. Supposedly on the set of uh, Enter the Dragon, you know, people would challenge him all the time, and they were like extras in the set. Uh, they would challenge him to a fight. He would kick the rest and be like, okay, get back to work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I would see him like taking a couple a couple of shots and like some really painful shots. And he'd be like, oh, hell. And then <laughs> and then that's when we would see like the like like the, the Bruce Lee, like the, the quick kicking. And uh, um, now here's the thing is like, how would Ali handle a one inch punch? Hmm. <laughs> Bruce wouldn't have the chance to set up a one-inch punch on Ali. <laughs> well, I mean, he, I mean, whenever we, when we see him doing it in like the, um, the, um, what do you call those things? Um, the demonstrations. Yeah, I was kind of, I was trying to think of the, the, the actual uh, forum where that would take place. The because uh, oh, not a competition, um, but uh, exhibition. Yeah, thank you. Exhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that he? He's standing there and then he's like writing himself, but in in actual battle, it's not. He's, he's not. He's not. Or fight, he's not reading himself. It's just that you know, uh, I'm not I'm not drawing back, and my hand is there, and then mm -hmm. I put that pressure that I mean that uh, that power into it. So yeah, yeah. so he doesn't he, so he doesn't have to like get you know stay still and like put his hand up and line it up there. It's just matters of you know, bam, hitting. So I'd be curious to see how Ali handles a, a one inch punch. Um, but that would be an interesting fight, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think it would last longer than a round. No, no. I mean, uh, they're they're both gonna be determined to not let it last longer than a round. Yeah. So yeah, not not bad, not a bad question, Bert. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so my next uh, interviewee um, is Kevin Spacey. Okay. My next interview is Kevin Spacey because we, we've had some conversations about him. Question one: Who the fuck do you think you are? Uh, that's actually that's actually close to that's actually close to the actual question. Um, we we have some conversations about him and, and being a tremendous actor and having such talent. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean it's like because you got talent, you know, doesn't mean that it automatically changes like who he is as a person or whatever. But um, my first question is why, like. Why would you do this? Why would you jeopardize your career? Everything, like, you know, the, the, again, we're talking about people that, like, they worked and fought hard to get to this position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you, you have people that, I mean, if you, if you were to look it up, there are millions of actors out there. It's just in the, in the U.S., there are millions of actors. Not all of them you're ever going to hear from. Like, right, like, right. there's a 1% of the actors that are out there in the world that you're actually going to, hear anything from or learn their name or anything mm -hmm. you know so the rest of them are just people that are acting and they may be doing something like they may be on broadway but you will they will never make the money these other people are making you'll never know their names i mean so it's you know it's pretty rare and it's you know you're pretty fortunate if you do get to that otherwise you're just a person that's making a good living as an actor but you're never going to be one of these big name people where people going where where you're almost like uh, universally known, right, right. So when you do achieve that, even after you know after a time of like playing little rose here, little rose here or there, and uh, and then you know, making your way up, why would you risk it all? Like why would you do this? Mm -hmm. I mean, because you don't have to. Like nothing says that you have to that you have to behave in this way. You choose to behave in this way. You choose to do these things, like, and you don't have to again. I've already said if I if I just just all of a sudden right now just became a huge like celebrity, okay, mm -hmm. and like people knew my name. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. I know this is gonna sound bad, and I think I've said it before, but whenever I need like female companionship, which I know I can have now, you know, because, you know, everybody knows me and that me girls would be crawling out of the woodwork or women would be crawling out of the woodwork just, you know, not because they like me, but because of who I am, you know. Doesn't mean they wouldn't like me, but hold up, you're saying that women are going after Post Malone for his money and not because they think he's a genuinely good guy? Um, well, 
I think that they they convince themselves that it's because he's a genuinely good guy and because that's what they hear, right? And you hear that and it's like, you know, well, he's a good guy. But the thing is, when he was just, you know, like post mailman and, <laughs> and, and you saw him in the mall and you weren't like, hey, he looks, you know, I heard that he's a really good guy. Um, you weren't talking to him. Well, yeah. You know, it, it was when he became a famous really good guy you talk, start talking to him but you tell everybody well he's just a really good guy and I, I just thought I should get to know him a little bit more uh huh sure so okay <laughs> so, so I've already said that when I, if I get to that status right yeah um it's call girls for me hmm. when I want female companionship it's call girls for me Interesting. not not for not for sex or anything but if I just want like to go out on a dinner you know right, right. I just want some, a you know just some female companionship because I don't have to worry about them having an ulterior motive or right, a hidden agenda. Right. I can't vet all these people out there. And I also can't trust myself. Mm -hmm. You know? So so I have to play it safe and have to do something that is safe for me. And that would be this. So I know the only that... The for that to be safe, though, is if you never get the same one twice. But the thing is, uh, I'm... Well, obviously, I'm I'm gonna be careful because I'm not gonna be like, no, nope, that's not happening, right? Um, but uh, you know, it's like I'm paying for your companionship and your time, and it doesn't go over like three hours because obviously, if we're gonna let's say we're gonna hang out watching movies and like that, you yeah. know, it, yeah. But what if you want to watch the extended cut of Return of the King? Um, or if I want to watch Zack Snyder's cut of <laughs> of Justice League. <laughs> It's like shit. All right, how how much is it for an additional hour? I did not know this movie was going to be this long. There you are, the three hour mark. It's like, damn, bitch, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but the movie's not over with. You got to go. <laughs> it's like you Get got out. you got HBO Max. <laughs> if not, I just gave you five hundred dollars. You can go buy that shit. <laughs> um, I want you out of my house a minute and a half ago. Now go. <laughs> Man, you better not charge me for that because I told you to get out. <laughs> No, but, you know, because I can't, like I said, I can't trust people. I would have a hard time. I already don't trust people. I would have an even harder time, like, doing that then. So, uh, but but it's it's available. When mm -hmm. you get to that there, it's available and it's easy. And it's, and, and some people don't have it a hidden agenda. It's just like, yeah, it's like, I have the opportunity to be with that person. And, you know, it's going to give me talking points and make me feel, you know, special about myself to where, you know, like... Gather around, little Susie. Let me tell you about the time that I gave it up to this actor. Oh my goodness! And it's like I was, you know, there I was walking through the hotel lobby, and I saw him sitting there, and I was like, "Well, I'll just go over there and see if I can get a selfie." And and then a selfie turned from one thing to another, and <laughs> selfies are the gateway drug. And it's like he asked me if I wanted to go up to his hotel room, and I was like, "Shit, yeah." <laughs> Grandma no straights. <laughs> and like and I knew he wanted sex and then so did I. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an expectation that he might get a little freaky deaky and I was like, but I was okay with that. So, so the the reason I'm telling you this, Susie, is just that if you have the opportunity, go ahead and take it. But you know, <laughs> make sure that you're aware that you know things might go with, uh, a little strange, but just sign up for that, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just, uh, they say, you know, not everybody has it, but I, I would be so paranoid. I would be, like, I, mm -hmm. I, just, I wouldn't be able to, like, I, if I just ran, like, I met somebody or whatever, and then the, uh, like, if we if we ever went out a day inward, like, I would have to have a, a person, like, you know, there, like, I don't know, like a, a damn, um, like a chaperone, no, like a notary public, <laughs> like, like someone that is like, is that not my person? Like, well, of course, you paid them, so they're gonna do whatever you know, they're gonna group whatever you say. Like, no, I gotta, I gotta have some impartial person that, that's gonna go with us everywhere we go. Um, <laughs> this <and> is me, <laughs> just, just bring me on for that. <laughs> Uh, like standing behind you guys like loudly chewing a croissant it's like dude you should bang her yeah, <laughs> she's totally hot I mean I mean and the thing is you know, in in that kind of security would be very important to me so I'd be like alright so tell me um, you followed them around the entire evening and like yes I, I did and you know and you can tell me some of the things they said in conversation like did she agree to this yes she agreed to this so uh, did she agree to um, was it consensual agreement to have sex 
Yes, it was consensual. It's like, um, and how long did it last? Three and a half minutes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and people are like, wow, that's it. But like, hey, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean, like, he's telling the truth. She agreed to it. It's like, I don't mean, it's like, yeah, you can tell what I'm saying. It's like, and how long did the crime last? About 20 minutes. Uh, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I've been cleared. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I just, I wouldn't be able to, to trust. So, but anyway, get back to Kevin Spacey. Be like, why? Yeah. Like, you, you have the opportunity, and and all kinds of like doorways are open to you. Like, why would you? Why would you do this? Why would you risk it all? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And and then the thing is like, what were your expectations? What did you think was going to happen? So. Let's say, for example, that you're you're somewhere. Um, I don't know. Let's let's say you're at a um. Okay, let, let's let's say you're you're at a con, right? Mm-hmm. And you're walking around just like you know you know checking everything out. You know we you know occasionally take breaks when we go and say let's take a look at the con. Yeah, and yeah, there's like at furries. Yeah, so uh, so there's the, fuck off rabbit. <laughs> so there there's this there's this like like this super hot girl uh, that's walking around. And like she's dressed like Starfire, right? Okay. And she's like, I mean, you're looking at it and like she like she looks like her. She's got like she's tall like her, like mm-hmm. you know. Um, and and you're like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up there and grab her in the ass and be like, hey, how, I'm a Comey. Would you like to check out my podcast? <laughs> I mean, that's how I always tell people about the podcast. Okay. And she and she's like and and she's like. Yeah, I know. And it's like, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, like, if you did something like that, most of the time you're not expecting the person to be reciprocal to that. Yeah. So let's say they are. What What? What next? I don't know. I've never gotten this far before. Right. <laughs> so so let's say, let's say I, just, I just walked up to some girl or whatever, and then, like, she's kind of cute. I'm like, hey, I, uh, I saw you up there. I'm like, I'm like damn, you're kind of hot. And I was curious, like, uh... You want to go back back to my house and fuck? And she's like, "Yes, I do." I'm like, but well, I mean, you're you're not Italian, are you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I would, I would be scared that I'm like, I I don't know shit about you. Well, you yeah. don't know anything about me. But I just said, you're like, yes, I want to do that very much. And I'm like, um, <laughs> it's a test, it's a trap, it's a test, it's a trap. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, 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 like you, I, I I tend to think that when you do that. You're never expecting that person to agree to whatever it is you that you say, because like, because then you'd be like, well, hold on, like, what, like, why would you agree to this? Right. It's like, like, what's wrong with you? Exactly. Gross. So I would never, if I were in your shoes. So, so if you're if you're like on set and you know it's like you know you're we're waiting for uh, we're waiting for the next scene to get set up and you walk up to a guy and you grab him by his dick, it's like, does this do anything for you? And he's like, yes, it does. But like, um. Um, like we we are you expecting me like yeah let's go do this man I don't know shit about you um you don't know anything <laughs> about me but yeah I mean you grabbed by my dick so I'm like all right maybe we should we should do it you know I'm like they, they, no no like he, <laughs> what were you really like what was your real expectation in the situation um you just like grab a guy be like we haven't we haven't had any conversation at all other than like I walk by but like you know. Morning, Ralph. Morning, Frank. I mean, like they, they, that's it. And Morning, then, Ralph. Nice dick. Right. And <laughs> Thanks, then I Frank. Walk, now I walk up to you, like, uh, I noticed you uh, over there, uh, like repairing that part of the set and everything. It's like, uh, that's some pretty good craftsmanship there. What are those, like, a three and a quarter inch nails? Like, yeah. And you grab him, just kiss him, and they're like, mm. he's like, yeah, I like this. But like, um, uh, uh, um, I know shit about you. We've never had a conversation, but uh, but you're into this, but like. Oh, like, like what? Again, what was your what was your expectation? What did you really expect to happen here? Yeah, like, um, because I I can't believe that you really expected that person to be like, yeah, let's do this. Um, so, like, I, I that's that's those are the questions I want to ask. Like, why would you do that? What was your expectation? And if the person said, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, but like, would you still be like, yeah, let's do this? You know, like. Because I, I, I would feel the other person has either there's something wrong with them that they would just automatically agree to that. Um, or, again, they're like, yeah, I'm going to do this because now I'm going to turn around and be like, oh, you know, show me on the doll where Kevin Spacey touched you. Right. You know, like, 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 you know, 
to, to borrow a line from Basement Jacks, like, where's your head at? I mean, like, <laughs> so that's what I would want to know. Like, you did this stuff. It's really stupid. But did you expect this to turn out any other way than how it did? Right, right. So were you purposely, like, I feel like sabotaging my life and my career? Like, or did you think, oh, hey, this would be great. I'll just have some random sex with somebody on the set because, you know, that works out in every setting where you just have random sex with somebody you <laughs> don't know. Couldn't possibly backfire. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, uh, that's, what, that's what the Surgeon General always says. is like, you know, no, don't use protection. And, in fact, you know, just have random sex with anybody you find. <laughs> and, uh, don't use a condom. It doesn't feel as good. Yeah, it's like, and whether you're a drug, de- a drug user or not, share needles. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like, there are people starving for needles in other countries. Hmm. It's wasteful to not reuse them. Yeah, it's like, and then we can send our extra needles over there. <laughs> Give us your used needles, too. We'll send those as well. Look yeah. at okay, Grinch. I'll pack them up here, and then I'll take them over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that, it, in some ways it would be interesting to to pick someone like that's brain. Yeah. Because that's the thing is, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that, that in any way that interviewing them is going to justify their actions. Right, or it's, right. gonna, it's going to, like... Turn them into a, uh, be like, oh, okay, well, now I understand. Or, like, well, they're not such a bad guy. Like, no. I, I Like, just because I know how the monster was made doesn't right. mean that you're not a monster. But, like, right, oh, right. so you dug up graves and it found the right arms and legs and stitched them all together and then used lightning to bring him back to life. <laughs> I understand now. Right. So, he's not really a monster. No, he's a monster. I just know how you made him, <laughs> you know. I guess I guess my question for Kevin Spacey would be like, you know, at, at what point was it that creativity and enriching people's lives through your creativity? When was that not enough? And it was like, no, I need to start exercising control over people. I need to start forcing myself on people. When did that become the next thing for you to be like, yeah, that's what I'm missing in my life? So I was, that's, you know, there's like a rape shaped hole in my heart that I've just got to fill. I will say this, with the exception of the 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 guy that you know came out and said that this happened to me when I was a minor, mm-hmm. all the other accounts that I read was that he made a pass, you know, it rather like it wasn't even like a like a like a like a um a a well it it wasn't like like a like a really smooth like like so um you know, like, you like gladiator films. It wasn't even like that. It was like, it was like, hey, I'm gonna shove my hand on this guy's pants, and the guy's like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? And then he's like, oh shit, uh, so you're not into this? Okay, sorry, bye. So I never, I never read an account where it said that he like went further than that. So yeah. the person was like, what the fuck? He was like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go I, over here now. Um, and. <laughs> That's like say again. That's that's the the accounts that I read. So yeah, yeah. Um, but again, like why, why? I mean, it, it'd be one thing if you went over there and talked to me and say, "Hey, uh, so uh, my name's Kevin and uh, I'm an actor." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not an actor, uh, but I play one on TV. Yeah. You know, so uh, and uh, just wondering. Um, so what's your name? So so uh, you uh, you you're working on a set here, huh? Uh, boom mic. Oh, interesting. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, sounds like a fun job. He says, sounds like a, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I'm an actor, not a comedian. No. But, uh, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> Wasn't he a comedian, too, though? <laughs> no. Uh, well, I guess he did the impressions. That was better. And then you're like, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is your thing, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe we could probably go to dinner some night or, you know. And, okay, well, great. Uh, well, hey, I'm, if your, I'm, uh, you your know. date don't work out, I'll be back over <laughs> at this hotel around midnight. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, and you'd be like, yeah. So I'm free tonight after uh, after the set and everything, and you know, and you know, and uh, since you're doing the boom mic, I yeah, I know that we'll be both off at the same time. You know, <laughs> you know, it's one thing if you if you if you're awkward like that. If you just walk to a guy like, hey, my name's Kevin, and uh, let me just feel like, okay, yeah, but things feel good down there. You like what I'm doing here? I'm like, that's not how you approach somebody for sex. Well, yeah, I just I don't get that at all anyway because it's like, how, how are you that like? You can't just write that off as being socially backwards. Right. It's like you're a grown ass man. You know better than that. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's not how you make a pass. <laughs> and plus, I'm just gonna say, and this may not work. May not happen to all guys, right? And and 
and if it doesn't happen, all guys are feeble. Like, like, and say, no, that, that would never happen to me. I'd be like, okay, well, I guess I'm just right. But if you, like, just randomly came in and shoved your hand down my pants, right, and, like, grabbed my dick, I'm probably going to get hard. Doesn't mean that it's because I like it, but my dick's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Just, I don't recognize these fingers. Like, <laughs> these are my fingers. It's just like, like, these aren't the ones that are normally touching me. Like, this is somebody new. Like, holy shit, it's somebody new. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean like, oh, so you're interested. No, no, it's just been a long time. <laughs> and begin the blood flow. <laughs> So I'm I'm just saying, I mean, like, doesn't mean that that I like what's going on or that I agree to it. It's yeah, just, you yeah. know. So that's just not really. It'd be like if I walked up behind a woman and I and I I reached around and like grabbed her tits and be like, guess who? <laughs> <laughs> no peeking. <laughs> it's like, do I know you? Nope, but I figure this is the best way for us to get to know each other. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, no, that's not gonna work. And again, if she's like, 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 yeah, I do like that, and I'd be like. Oh, you shop at Ross. I mean, like, I mean, that would be a surefire way for me. Like, like, oh no, like, like, do, do, does this happen to you often? And you say yes, yeah. you know. But then at the same time, if if my expectation were her to get all freaked out, then that's really what I wanted was her to freak out. Like, oh, you, you know, you 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 guy, you masher, you brute. And be like, so I really didn't expect to get like to turn you on or anything. It was just I. Just like hey, that's the game. Like, what were you expecting? What was the expectation here? Right, you know? right. So, like, that's what I want to know. And and again, <laughs> you I, I'm every conversation this way. <laughs> <laughs> and again, after all is said and done, I'm gonna be like, like, yes. Um, you know, you're still Frankenstein's monster. I you think <laughs> like that. My mind has not changed about that. I would argue that Frankenstein's monster was misunderstood. <laughs> Well, and Mr. Spacey is not misunderstood. <laughs> he was understood very well. <laughs> He's just a soul whose intentions were good. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I agree. Uh, but the, uh, I know they say that that you know, well, you know, he was Frankenstein's monster. I prefer to think that Frankenstein was actually more the monster because he was the oh, guy totally. just like digging up graves and everything and was like, I'm going to bring this guy back to life. You <laughs> say, and he's going to be happy with the fact that he's back to life in like a whole new like mixed match body because, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, no. I, and then, then, you know, when, when the monster went off on his own, he was like, what did the little peasant girl say to the creek? <laughs> Splash! <laughs> 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 but, but James and Stein it's like you, you threw a little girl in, in there in the lake he goes that was weeks ago motherfucker <laughs> Frankenstein's monster does. <laughs> oh, Rick James Frankenstein. Next, next to Racist Bay was probably one of the one of the best things we ever created. That's true. Uh, <laughs> you fertile motherfucker! <laughs> I never should have let you peasants have kids. You don't know how to appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> and the wind blows on fire, guys. They never should have given you motherfuckers fire. <laughs> No, I didn't throw the peasant's daughter in the <laughs> creek. Why do you think I'd do that? I, well, that's not the kind of thing I do. Yeah, I remember throwing the peasant's daughter in the creek. <laughs> well, why would you do that? <laughs> they can have another one. <laughs> they can have another kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Rick James Frankenstein. Oh, so good. Oh, so anyway, so anyway, and, and I know you could you could pick anybody, mm -hmm. but it's for you know any you know any like um. Rapey monsters, like celebrity rapey monster, right, but right. um, I, I think that because I was a fan of of so many uh Kevin Spacey's like movies, yeah, yeah, and and his his talent, that it disappointed me more to because 
because you know you see them you and you look forward to seeing them in, in other roles mm -hmm. um and then like it, it doesn't happen you're like 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 damn it damn you um right <laughs> you know it's like damn you all to hell and the thing is you don't owe me anything so it's not like like you know, it's like oh you disappointed me about being a rapey little piece of shit <laughs> but it's like you you disappointed me just from a humanity sake right you know? right you disappointed me by by being a piece of shit right you know? yeah yeah so anyway so that that's that that's why I would want to interview him yeah okay all right uh I would want to interview Weird Al. Oh, I, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... What what specifically would you want to know about him? Specifically, I want to talk to him about humor and the nature of humor. Oh, good answer. Yeah, because like, everybody's like, oh, where do you get your ideas for song parodies? <laughs> Is it always about food? And it's like, I mean, you know, he's been asked the same questions a million times. I want to, I want to look at, like... How do you, as a comedian and an entertainer, think of a joke and think, yes, this is going to hit it with everybody who hears the song? When I write this line, everybody who's going to think this is going to think it's funny. Like, what what is your criteria for humor? So that's specifically what I want to hear out of him. Hmm. Okay. I think it's a really good, yeah. Uh, especially for someone who who built his, his, uh, his career around that. But not only that, but... Like the kind of stuff that he was doing at the time mm -hmm. was not mainstream. I mean, even now, it's still not mainstream. It was very niche. Yeah, yeah. And he was able to to take it mainstream, and no one really kind of followed up behind him. Normally, when you have like an artist that does something that's different, you'll have like another artist that will, or a couple artists that will, that will come up and do a very similar thing, mm -hmm. um, and they will achieve uh, success. But not a, not normally along the lines of that first person. Right, right. Um, but no one ever came up like after him, but like you know, and I do like parody songs too. But like, right, no. right. It's like, and I, and I also play the accordion. It was <laughs> like, I mean, and that that's right there. It's like so. Uh, yeah, it's like my name is Weird Al Yankovic. I play the accordion and uh, I like to sing polka music and do parodies <laughs> of uh, of popular songs. And uh, I'm gonna be the first uh, artist of my kind on MTV. But like, yep. So I'm gonna tell you one right now. You wanna keep working here? Lay off the drugs. You know I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean I, there's no. I can't imagine that anybody except for his parents told him that you know he would be a success. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the odds were not in his favor at all. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I mean, like try try pitching that idea to somebody. Because like you know the, his his first song that like played on the radio was My Bologna. It's like, my, 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 my Bologna. Yep, yep. I, like, <laughs> God, he, I forgot about that song. He recorded it in his school bathroom because the acoustics were good. It's like, I mean, you know, if you tried to suggest that to somebody where it's like, oh, yeah, here's here's the song, here's the parody, people would just be like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I got to interrupt you here for one minute because that is probably one of the worst things I've ever heard is that the acoustics were, were really good in my school bathroom. Yep. <laughs> because that means that... When you're in there and you're taking a shit and you and you fart like <laughs> that echoes throughout the entire bathroom. Like I mean, you, it's just, it's when the, when the acoustics are bad, you're like, oh, you know, it's like you know, Burr. but then when when they're like they're like really it's like, you it's get like, like oh, like, Ooh, that's damn. bassy. Yeah. <laughs> like, people walk by bed like, oh shit, what's going on in there? Like I'm like that's horrible. That's horrible. I would not I would not want good acoustics in my bathroom. Yeah, and, and, you know, he doesn't look like the kind of person who would be, like, successful in the music industry. You know, he looks like Napoleon Dynamite, basically. Right. He's, he's just got this frizzy fro, these, like, pedo glasses and this this nappy mm. mustache. And it's like, there's no reason for this guy to be successful, but he's just objectively funny. Yeah. And, like, the last time I saw him live, it was crazy seeing the diversity in the crowd, where it's like, you've got everybody from Zoomers to, like, Baby Boomers... Mm. And everyone in between, and like they're all singing along with the songs. He's just he's timeless. He's got staying power. He's been going since the late seventies, and is still just as popular today as ever. It's it's just it's crazy to me. So like uh, that that you know since like the overlap I have with Weird Al is that you know I try to be funny too. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want to figure out is like how did you figure out that secret? <laughs> Um, you know what I would ask him, one, one thing that I'd be curious of asking him if I had the opportunity is like, what, 
what, if anything, are you doing to redeem your soul? Or or have you just come to the conclusion that that it can't be done and that you're not even trying, that you're just accepting your fate? Hmm. Because I'm not sure if you're aware, but Dark Side, ruler of Apocalypse, <laughs> said that Weird Al was the worst person in the universe and that he was the universe's biggest monster <laughs> for, for what he did, so he was ripping off other artists. Those and, song parodies, yeah. Right. So if Dark Side says you are worse than him, the man is like, hey, I want the anti-life equation because I want to wipe out all life in the universe. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but Weird Al, he's a horrible being. Like, like, have you just, do you just accept that? Or are you, are you really trying to be like, really, am I that bad? Maybe I should do something to redeem myself. Or like, you know, like, I, I, there's nothing I can do to, so I'm just, I'm just going to lean into it. Well, you know, I mean, he, he is the devil. So <laughs> we, we saw Weird Al's true face. He's, true. he's truly Satan. So he is. So. So yeah, I mean, like, why, why, why try to redeem your soul when you're like, there's, there's not much promotion beyond that. <laughs> and that was on uh, Adam ruins everything, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. So yeah, I thought it was a tenacious D thing, but no, you're right. It's Adam ruins everything. Yeah. Um, Dave Grohl played the devil in uh, Pick right. a Destiny. That's right. So uh, so yeah, that that would be that would be my next uh, ideal interview. Hmm. That's good. I like that. All right there, folks. That was Our Moms Think We're Funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand.